Now you have to discuss pharyngeal pouches and pharyngeal clefts. Where are the pouches? They are on the lateral wall of pharynx inside. And where are the clefts? They are in the lateral wall of pharynx but outside. So you mean to say pouches or clefts are in the lateral wall of pharynx? Yes. But if they are inside, they will be lined by endoderm. Yeah, pouches will be lined by endoderm. What are the cleft? Cleft are outside, so they will be lined by ectoderm. Okay, can we see some diagrams? Yeah, first a question has come. What is the question asking? This question is eternal question. What do you mean by eternal? Eternal, you know. Eternal. What eternal? It was a question for my seniors in PG entrance. It was a question for me in my PG entrance, which is year 2000, 18 years back. It is a question in my juniors exam, your exam, and your juniors exam and uh, their juniors exam, it will keep coming. Why? Because nobody knows anything about parafollicular C cells concretely. You mean to say their answers keep changing? Yes. The answer keep changing. If the answer keep changing, then what is the answer? Presently, you want? Yes. Okay, I'll tell you. Presently, if you want the answer, then it is uh, neural crest cell. Then what was the old answer? Old answer, yes. The ultimate brinkle body. If neural crest is not given, then an answer will become ultimate brinkle body. That is old answer. And what if ultimate brinkle body is not given? That can also happen. Then what will you answer? Then, then you have to answer pouch number 4. And if pouch number 4 is not given, then you have to answer pouch number 5. Are you trying to say that all of these are involved in formation of parafollicular C cells? Yes. Okay. So you mean to say in this question, my answer is D better than A? Yes. And A is better than B? Yes. Is better than C? Yes. But all the four are answers. How come all the four are answers? Explain. It's a story. I'll tell you the story. But just remember that D is a better answer than A. If both of them are not found, examiner is doing that. What do I do? Then you take your answer as fourth pouch. If fourth pouch is not given, then fifth pouch. Do we have a fifth pouch? I don't think we have a fifth pouch. No, we have a fifth pouch, but it is rudimentary. Okay. Can you tell us the story? Wait for some time. We'll see the story. At this moment, just take a coronal section. Coronal section of what? Developing pharynx. So you want to take a coronal section of developing pharynx for what? To look at the lateral wall of the pharynx. So when you look at the lateral wall of the pharynx, what do you see? I see that in the lateral wall of pharynx on the inside, pouch 1, 2, 3, 4. Line by endoderm? Yes, pouches line by endoderm. And what do you see on the outside? Cleft 1, 2, 3, 4. Because their cleft are on the outside, they will be lined by ectoderm. But that is also lateral wall of the pharynx, lined by ectoderm. Let us look at this again. And this is the front view. Front view of what? Pharynx. You're looking at the floor of pharynx. So we are looking at floor of pharynx now. Yes. Okay. Line by endoderm. Yes, of course. Line by endoderm. Pharynx is line by endoderm. This is the upper part of gut tube. Line by endoderm. What is this? This is the pouch one, two, three, four. Lateral wall of pharynx. Line by endoderm. I want to know what the pouches are doing in the adults. Adult derivatives. I also want to know what is happening to cleft. Where is cleft? I don't see cleft. You see, this is cleft 1. And this is cleft 2. And this is cleft 3. And this is cleft 4. So there are four clefts. Yes, these are clefts. Okay, fine. Line by ectoderm. Yes, ectoderm. What are the what is happening to clefts? That we'll find out here. So this is the next stage. Yes. What is happening now? You see, these are the inner endoderm. Yes. Pouches. Yes. What are they doing? We want to see. We also want to know what is this cleft doing which are on the outside lined by ectoderm. Let us find out. Understand. Pharyngeal cleft 1 will become external auditory meatus. If you say pharyngeal cleft 1 will become external auditory meatus, I think it will be lined by some surface ectoderm because any external opening is lined by surface ectoderm. So, so this is pharyngeal cleft 1. What is happening to cleft number 2, 3, 4? They are gone. They are obliterated. How the cleft number 2, 3, 4 are obliterated? Because the mesoderm of the second arch will cover them. So mesoderm of second arch will cover them. Yes. You are telling mesoderm of second arch will cover the cleft number 2, 3, 4. Yes. 
and cleft node 2, 3, 4 will be all iterated. Yes, you see. They will form a cervical sinus. What is sinus? Sinus means a blind sac with one opening, sinus. So, cervical sinus, neck region, there is a blind sac with one opening, cervical sinus? Yes. A remnant of cleft number 2, 3, 4? Yes. Later, it will become a cyst and then the cyst will disappear. You are telling there was cleft number 2, 3, 4? Yes. And which is then covered by mesoderm of second arch, overgrowing it. Yes. And then this cleft number 2, 3, 4 will be obliterated to form a cervical sinus with one opening. Yes. And the opening will disappear to form a cyst. Yes. If the opening disappears, it will become a cyst, the cervical cyst, and then it should disappear. And what if it does not disappear? Then it is surgery problem near the angle of mandible, brachial cyst near the angle of mandible, brachial cyst. So it will be anomaly, yes. So it should normally disappear, yes. Okay. Can you tell me what is happening with the pouches? Pouches, let us see what is happening. Actually, the pouch one will form middle ear cavity and eustachian tube also. So fendal pouch one, yes, will form middle ear cavity and eustachian. Where is eustachian tube opening? Into nasopharynx. Nasopharynx. You are telling the first pharyngeal pouch lined by endoderm, yes, lined by endoderm, is forming middle ear cavity and the eustachian tube which will open to nasopharynx, yes. Their epithelium is endoderm of pouch 1. So, middle ear cavity and eustachian tube, their epithelium is endoderm of pouch 1, yes. What is the pouch 2 doing? Pouch 2, yes. Pouch 2 has some endoderm forming epithelium for the Tonsil. Tonsil has tonsillar crypt lined by endodermal epithelium from the pouch 2. If you say pharyngeal pouch 2 endoderm will line the tonsillar crypt, then where is tonsil from? Tonsil is not from endoderm. Tonsil is from mesoderm. If you say tonsil is not from endoderm and tonsil is from mesoderm, I think this is head and neck mesoderm. Yes. Then it is from neural crest cell. Yes, it is from neural crest cell. This question has already come. You are telling tonsil is mesoderm. Yes. Head neck mesoderm, secondary mesoderm. Yes. From neural crest cell. Yes. Then what is the pouch 2 doing? Pouch 2 do not form the tonsil. Why? Because endoderm cannot form mesoderm. So, final pouch 2 is lined by endoderm. It will just form the endodermal epithelium of tonsil. And what is tonsil from? Neural crest cell derived secondary mesoderm. We'll draw a diagram for that. And what is the pouch 3 doing? Pouch 3, if you look ventral, thymus will develop. And if you look dorsal, inferior, parathyroid will develop. So, pouch 3, dorsal is inferior, parathyroid. Yes. Okay. See, both of them may be missing in D. George syndrome because in D. George syndrome, pouch 3 and 4 are compromised. So, telling D. George syndrome, pouch 3, 4 compromised and third pouch compromised? Yes. Then I think ventral thymus compromised and dorsal inferior parathyroid compromised? Yes. What will happen then? In D. George syndrome, when you say pouch 3, and pouch 4 are involved, when pouch 3 is involved, this baby may not have thymus. So, if there is no thymus, then we will train the T lymphocyte. And if you don't train the T lymphocyte, then there will be decreased cell mediated immunity. Bacteria can kill the baby. Severe bacterial infection. You are telling D. George syndrome, babies have a compromised third pouch? Yes. Compromised thymus? Yes. So, the T lymphocytes are not trained to kill the bacteria? No. So, bacteria can kill the baby? Yes. Severe bacterial infection. Baby can also die because of hypocalcemia. What is this? A sign. You know the sign? This is hypocalcemia. But why hypocalcemia and D. George syndrome? Tetany. Hypocalcemia tetany. This is a sign in uh, hypocalcemia tetany if you say this is a sign of hypocalcemia tetany tetanic spasm yes but why because inferior parathyroid was missing so deficiency of parathormone 
so deficiency of blood calcium hypocalcemia so Dijon syndrome babies have partially missing so in fear of parathyroid is compromised parathormone levels are low and the low levels of blood calcium and it can kill the baby why cardiac problems hypocalcemia cardiac problem but do you know in Dijon syndrome, what is the most common cause of death? Is it bacterial infection? Is it hypocalcemia or cardiovascular anomalies? AP septum anomalies. It was mostly AP septum anomalies. Remember that. Anyway, what is the fourth pouch doing? Fourth pouch will form superior parathyroid. If it's a fourth pouch will form superior parathyroid, I see something more here. What is that? what where where did you see what did you see this thing what is this thing this thing is the ultimate wrinkle body it is a vestigial remnant of the fifth pharyngeal pouch remember the superior parathyroid this yellow color superior parathyroid that yellow color is developing in the fourth pouch but that uh, other blue color which I have marked red now is ultimate wrinkle body and it is a vestigial remnant of the fifth pouch this is the diagram which we have to draw now so we have a fifth pouch yes but it is rudimentary and then it becomes ultimate wrinkle body so we do have a fifth pouch but it is rudimentary it becomes ultimate wrinkle body and ultimate wrinkle body then fuse with fourth pouch as the fifth pouch disappears, the ultimate wrinkle body, a remnant of the fifth pouch, will attach to fourth pouch. And what is the importance of that ultimate wrinkle body? Actually, it is the ultimate wrinkle body which will receive what it will receive, the neural crest cells. And when the neural crest cell will come to the ultimate wrinkle body, they themselves will change into parafollicular C cells of thyroid. Oh, parafollicular C cells, the eternal question? Yes. What did I say, which is the first answer? Somebody asking, where is parafollicular C cell from? Your answer is from the neural crest cell. And if neural crest cell not found, then your answer is ultimate wrinkle body. If that is not found, then your answer is fourth pouch. And if fourth pouch is not found, then your answer is fifth pouch. Because all of them are involved in formation of in the parafollicular C cells. This is the diagram which we are supposed to draw. So, we are supposed to draw this diagram. Yes, that is the diagram. Okay, then let us draw the diagram. As you are drawing this diagram, again, we will draw the pharynx, but there is one thing here to see. What is this? This is tympanic membrane. Tympanic membrane. I think tympanic membrane is having all the three germ layers. Correct. Because inner epithelium is from the inner epithelium is from the endoderm of the pharyngeal pouch one, outer epithelium is from the ectoderm of the cleft one, and the connective tissue is from the pharyngeal arches. So tympanic membrane, which is separating middle ear cavity from the external ear canal. Tympanic membrane which is separating the middle ear cavity from the external ear canal has the three germ layers. Yes, because inner epithelium of tympanic membrane is from the endoderm of pouch one. Outer epithelium of tympanic membrane is ectoderm of cleft one. And the mesoderm is from the arch, pharyngeal arch. That's you remember. Now we draw the diagram. So you draw the same diagram. Yes. Okay, then do it. Draw the diagram. As you see, this is the pharynx. And what is pharynx? It is the upper part of the gut tube. So it is lined by endoderm and is the first germ layer to develop, which is the next one. That is the mesoderm and which is still the next one. That is the ectoderm, which is actually the last to appear. What is happening to this ectoderm, which is the last to appear? There are some clefts developing now. Where is the cleft? See, this is cleft one, pharyngeal cleft one. That is pharyngeal cleft one. Yes. Okay. Then where is cleft number two, three, four? Two, three, four. Cleft two, three, and four. Two, three, four now? Yes. You know what is happening to cleft one? Yeah, what is happening? Final cleft one will become this. Yeah, what is this? What is this? External 
auditory meatus. So you're telling cleft one will become external auditory meatus. Yes, I think it is lined by ectoderm. Yeah, any external opening is lined by ectoderm. Cleft one become external auditory meatus and it is lined by ectoderm. What is happening to cleft number two, three, four? Cleft number two, three, four. Yes, I'll tell you. The mesoderm of the second arch will cover them, obliterate them. So this is mesoderm of second arch. Yes. Mesoderm of second arch will cover them, obliterate them. And when the second arch mesoderm is covering the cleft number 2, 3, 4, they are obliterated. What will form here? That is called as cervical sinus. What is a cervical sinus? It's a blind sac with one opening. So there will be some blind sac with one opening like this. Yes. And later that opening will also close. You mean to say now cyst? Yes. First, there is a cervical sinus, blind sac with the own opening. It's a remnant of cleft number, two, three, four, and then it will become a cyst, and then the cyst should disappear. And what if the cyst is not disappearing? Then there is a cyst near the angle of mandible, and it is a surgical problem, and you call it as brachial cyst. It should disappear normally. So you're telling that mesoderm of second arch will overgrow cleft number two, three, four. They are obliterated to form some cervical sinus, a blind sac with one opening, which will then opening will close, become a cervical cyst, and then a cyst should disappear. Yes, it should disappear. Otherwise, there will be surgical problems. We'll discuss surgical problems later. Right now, discuss the pouches. Pouches, what pouches? You remember there were some pouches here, pouch one, pharyngeal pouch one, yes. On one side, no, not on one side, on both side. So this is pouch one on both side. Yes. What is it lined by? What do you think? Endoderm. Okay, pouches are lined by endoderm. In the lateral ball of pharynx. Yes. What is pouch one doing? Pouch one will form the middle ear cavity, and and then it is communicating with the nasopharynx. How? It is uh, also forming the eustachian tube to communicate with the nasopharynx. You are telling. The pharyngeal pouch one, yes, is going to form middle ear cavity, yes, and also this uh, eustachian tube, yes, this eustachian tube is communicating middle ear cavity with the nasopharynx, yes, nasopharynx, and has some epithelium which is from endoderm, yes, that epithelium is from endoderm, and what is the pouch two epithelium doing? Pouch two epithelium, yes, that we'll see, but first you tell me about this. Tympanic membrane. This is tympanic membrane. Yes. So if you say tympanic membrane, I'll tell you the tympanic membrane is separating the middle ear cavity from external ear canal. This is the tympanic membrane. Then it is separating the middle ear cavity from the external ear canal. So it has three germ layer. If you look at tympanic membrane, inner epithelium of tympanic membrane is endoderm of pouch one. Outer epithelium of tympanic membrane is the ectoderm of cleft one, cleft one ectoderm. And what is the connective tissue of the tympanic membrane? Connective tissue of tympanic membrane is mesoderm of the pharyngeal arches. Okay, can you tell me what is happening to pouch two? Pouch two, yes. Okay, I'll tell you. This is pharyngeal pouch two. This is three and this is four. So pouch two and three and four. Yes, this is pouch pharyngeal pouch number two. Three and four. So what is pouch number two doing? Pouch number two will form the tonsillar epithelium. But if you say pouch number two will form the tonsillar epithelium, then we will form the tonsil. Tonsil is not from endoderm. Tonsil is from mesoderm. And who is forming that tonsil mesoderm? That is the neural crescent derived mesoderm, secondary mesoderm. Understand? This is hedonic mesoderm. It is mostly neural crest cell derived mesoderm. So that's why. Tonsil is a mesodermal structure coming from the secondary mesoderm from neural crest cell. But the epithelium is from the pharyngeal pouch number two lining tonsillar crypt. What is pouch number three doing? Pouch number three, which was missing in Dijor syndrome. Yes, Dijor syndrome. But what is it forming? What it is forming, I'll tell you. If you are looking at the dorsal side, then it will be inferior parathyroid. If you are looking at the ventral side, it will be thymus. So you are telling that pouch number 3 has a dorsal ventral portion. Yes, each pouch has a dorsal ventral portion. So pouch number 3, dorsal is inferior parathyroid on each side. Yes. 
and thymus is a bilobed structure coming from each side. Yes, thymus is a bilobed structure coming from each side, but it is developing on the ventral aspect of the third pouch. And they will be missing in Dijon syndrome. Yeah, actually, Dijon syndrome pouch 3 is missing. And when you are talking about the Dijon syndrome, the thymus was missing. And because the thymus is missing, there could be severe bacterial infection or there could be hypocalcemia as well. But still, you should know that babies may die rarely of bacterial infection. Babies may die rarely because of hypercalcemia. They mostly die because of AP septum anomalies, cardiovascular defects. Okay, what is pouch 4 doing? Pouch 4, yes. Pouch 4 is actually forming superior parathyroid, but something will attach here to the pouch 4. If we say pouch 4 is forming superior parathyroid and something is attaching here, what is that? That is actually ultimate bronchial body. And where is ultimate bronchial body coming from? From the fifth pouch. So you have a fifth pharyngeal pouch also yes but it is rudimentary and because it is rudimentary it will remain as the ultimate wrinkle body understand we do have a fifth pouch fifth pharyngeal pouch but it is rudimentary and the vestigial remnant and ultimate wrinkle body which is attaching to the fourth pouch what is the importance of ultimate wrinkle body attaching to fourth pouch it is required by the neural crest cells Actually, neural crest cells will come and populate the ultimate wrinkle body. When the neural crest cells will come and populate the ultimate wrinkle body, there they will change into parafollicular C cells and give the C hormone in the thyroid. What is C hormone? The calcitonin hormone in the thyroid. So, thyroid gland has some calcitonin secreting cell. Yes, they are called parafollicular C cells and they would have come from neural crest cell. And what if neural crest is not an option? Then you say second answer, old answer, ultimate wrinkle body. If that is not in the option, then the fourth pouch. And if fourth pouch is not in the option, then fifth pouch could be your answer because it is also involved. This is the story I wanted you to understand. But first answer should always be neural crest cell. So that is all what we wanted to discuss in this diagram. Now, once this is over, you are supposed to look at this question. Tell me what is the answer? Thymus, missing in Dijon syndrome, which pouch can compromise? If you remember, we have discussed this third pouch, but where, dorsal or ventral? Correct, ventral. What was developing dorsal? Dorsal, actually, it was the, yes, inferior parathyroid. Yes, inferior parathyroid. Correct. So, we'll keep our answer choice number B. Of course, because thymus is developing ventral. Your answer remains choice number B. And uh, what about this question? It is asking about the tonsil. Tonsil. I know. Yeah, what do you know? What is the answer? There's an old answer and there's a new answer. So what is the new answer? New answer is this. Neural crest cell derived secondary mesenchyme will form the tonsil. And what if it is missing from the options? If it is missing from the options, then I will take the old answer. What is the old answer? That is pouch 2. Earlier we used to teach tonsil come from second pouch. But now we have realized that second pouch will give only tonsillar epithelium. Tonsil come from neural crest cell. So, D is a better answer than B? Yes. But B is basically involved with formation of tonsillar epithelium, not the tonsil. So, D is better than B? Yes. Actually, when you are talking about the thyroid now, what about that? When you are talking about thyroid, then it is endodermal in our region. If it is endodermal in origin where at the floor of pharynx at the floor of pharynx i think uh, we have been looking at that yes you have been looking at that but this time you have to talk about tongue development so tongue is developing at the floor of the pharynx yes and there will be a foramen cecum and that endoderm at the foramen cecum will form a thyroglossal duct and that thyroglossal duct will form the thyroid gland. What is happening? Tell again. Actually, to discuss thyroid development, you have to tell. It is coming from endoderm. Where? At the floor of pharynx. Yo, what about floor of pharynx? Tongue is developing at the floor of pharynx and there is a foramen cecum on the tongue. There is some endoderm at the foramen cecum forming thyroglossal duct forming thyroid gland. 
can you show that in some diagram uh, diagram is coming now so this is the diagram for of pharynx yes and you are telling there is this foramen cecum in the developing tongue yes that is foramen cecum line by some endoderm so there is some endoderm at the foramen cecum at the floor of the pharynx where the tongue is lapping is giving a duct and that duct thyroglossal duct will form the thyroid gland it will migrate from the tongue to the anterior neck region so thyroid is uh, coming from the tongue for when she come to the anterior neck region migrating down yes and endodermal in all region yes okay what about this ultimate brinkel body ultimate brinkel body is important why it is a vestigial remnant of the fifth pouch and attaching to fourth pouch now so so some neural crest cell will come here and form the parafollicular c cell which will be given to the thyroid so thyroid will have parafollicular c cell form the c hormone which is called calcitonin hormone so in the thyroid you need to discolt ultimate wrinkle body yeah because you need the c cell you know okay then let us discuss some wrinkle arch anomalies and a diagram is there but before that you should know 95% of the wrinkle arch anomalies are from the second arch so mostly second arch yes like what like there can be wrinkle cysts wrinkle sinus wrinkle fistula you are talking about those things now okay then uh, we use this diagram and tell about the wrinkle cyst wrinkle cyst as i told you is a vestigial remnant of the cleft number 2 3 4 especially second arch is giving problem there is a cyst near the angle of mandible so cyst near the angle of mandible the brachial cyst yes the cervical cyst did not disappear no there was a cervical sinus then there is a cervical cyst and it is persisting so brachial cyst has come it is a surgical problem now and uh, what if this cyst is opening where in the skin if the cyst is opening in the skin outside then it will form brachial sinus brachial fistula but remember brachial sinus fistula are in the lower neck and the cyst cyst is in the upper neck cyst is in the upper neck region and the sinus fistula are in the lower neck region what is this sinus and the fistula discuss more detail first of all you should know this is anterior border of the sternomastoid yeah okay if this is the anterior border of sternomastoid all these anomalies are anterior to the anterior border of the sternomastoid so they are all at the anterior border of the sternomastoid yes this is sternomastoid and they are at the anterior border of the sternomastoid okay anterior neck region Yes, anterior triangle of the neck, actually, anterior triangle of neck. Okay, fine. Then what is this? This is a cervical sinus which is persisting. What cervical sinus persisting? It is called internal brachial sinus opening into tonsillar fossa. You are telling that this is internal brachial sinus opening into tonsillar fossa. Yes, a blind sac with one opening. and what if it is opening on the skin of lower neck if it is opening on the skin of lower neck then it is external brachial sinus external brachial sinus so there is some external brachial sinus which is opening on the skin of lower neck what if i have double sinus one which is opening into tonsillar fossa and one which is opening into skin then you have double sinus means double opening and it will become a fistula so when i have external brachial sinus plus internal brachial sinus opening into tonsillar fossa double sinus means fistula yes can i see a fistula yes let us see this is the diagram of double sinus which is see this is the yellow color internal brachial sinus and that is the blue color external brachial sinus you are telling this is the blue color external brachial sinus yes opening on the skin of lower neck skin of lower neck and what is this uh, other one other one is actually internal brachial sinus opening into the tons but if you have double sinus then it is a fistula brachial fistula yes yeah, see now this is a brachial fistula having double opening and bringing 
saliva from the tonsillar fossa into the skin of the lower neck. So, you got some saliva in the skin of lower neck, some opening here, yes, but that saliva came from tonsillar fossa. So, tonsillar fossa sending some saliva here, yes, some tract is there, yeah, fistular tract and when you try to remove this tract, be careful because it is passing between the two branches of common carotid artery. What is this two branches of common carotid artery? That is internal and external carotid artery, it is passing between the two. So, that is why when you're removing this fistula, don't damage this external carotid artery or internal carotid artery because it is like this. So, you have to be careful. It is going between the two arteries. When you remove the fistula track, be careful about the arteries. Okay, fine. I'll be careful when I become an ENT surgeon. Right now, I'm just struggling for getting my PG seat. Definitely, you'll get it. Just keep working hard and smart. Hard and smart. So, that is a fistula. Yes, sprinkle fistula.